2 Corinthians. And we're in 2 Corinthians, please, chapter number 4. 2 Corinthians, please. Second Corinthians chapter number four, and we're breaking in at verse number eight, please. Second Corinthians chapter number four and verse number eight. And Paul the apostle writes, and he says in verse number eight, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then, death worketh in us, but life in you. We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore we therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perisheth, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our late affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us. Mind you, it doesn't say it worketh against us. We often think that when trouble comes and affliction comes, it's all working against us. It's not working against us at all. Uh, for our late affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading from His own precious truth. I don't think there's too many would disagree with me this morning in the fact that in this world today, there is so much we see going on that causes us to fret and, and to fear. So much going on in the world today that we look at that causes us to fret and fear, especially when you see the rise of wicked men and how wicked man has become and what man's capable of doing nowadays. Boys, that would make you fret and would make you fear. When you think today of how the wicked prospers in their way, well, there is so much that we see in our world today that causes us to, to fret and to fear. And there is so much in our world today that we see that, that causes us to be angry and causes us to be, to be anxious. There's many things that we look at today going on in our world that makes us angry and makes us anxious. And there is so much going on in our world, child of God, today. A blind man on a galloping horse can see it. And see things today that it makes us worry and, and so forth. I wonder today, are you fretting and fearing over something? Perhaps that's what's going on in our world today. And what you see today really causes you to, to fear and to fret. Well, you know, the Word of God has an answer for your fears and your frets this morning. Because in Psalm 37 and verse 1, we read these words, 
Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. And all the wickedness that's going on in our world today, it won't always be. The wicked man won't always prosper. He shall soon be cut down like the grass and, and wither as the green herb. And if today, child of God, if there's something making you anxious, let the Word of God bring that anxious heart of yours to a rest. Because in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, we read, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your, and with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through, through Christ. And today, child of God, if you're worrying about something, and mind you, we're worrying, we shouldn't be worrying. And if you worry about something, don't you forget what 1 Peter 5 and verse 7 says. It says, Casting all thy care upon him, for, for he careth for you. And isn't it lovely, child of God, you and I this morning have a heavenly Father who cares? that you and I have a heavenly Father who knows, that you and I have a heavenly Father who understands every fear, who understands every anxiety, who understands every care, and can meet us at the very point of our need. Oh, there's much in our world that we see today that causes us to feel in so many different ways. Maybe you're an aged saint here this morning. And you have your own thoughts about the present. And your own thoughts about the future. And you don't know what way the future goes, but you know, child of God this morning, who holds the future. You see, child of God, this morning, no matter what we look at, what we see going on in our world, I remember sitting under the ministry of Pastor Ivan Thompson. Ivan was my pastor for six and a half years. And I remember Ivan one Lord's Day morning saying, no matter how dark and how difficult life becomes, or how dark and difficult your circumstances may be, for the child of God, the best is yet to be. And it doesn't matter how difficult or how dark any situation may be, the best is yet to be. And then he went on to say this, he says, up there, up there, he said, there will be no heart valves, hip joints, hearing needs, walking stick. Because up there, the former things will have, will have all passed away. And it's true, child of God, because no matter how dark and difficult life becomes, the best is yet to be. Over the three doors that lead into Milan Cathedral, above each door there's an arch, and every arch has its own message to tell. As you walk in under the first arch, there is a, a wreath of roses that are sculptured there. And underneath are written these words, All that pleases is but for a moment. Isn't that true? All that pleases is but for a moment. 
What does the hymn writer say? Swift to its close ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim. Their glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. You see, all that pleases is but for a moment. You walk under the second arch, you go through the second door, and here above this arch there is a cross car. And underneath the cross there is this inscription, and it says this, all that troubles is but for a moment. All that pleases is but for a moment. All that troubles is but for a moment. And just as you're about to head and walk into the main sanctuary of that great cathedral, you look up and, and then on the third arch there's, there's nothing seen. And even though there's nothing seen, there's an inscription, and this is what it says. Things that are not seen are eternal. You know, child of God, how often we focus too much on the things that are seen. Instead of focusing our hearts and focusing our thoughts upon the things that are not seen, my verse text this morning is verse 18, the last verse of chapter number 4. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And this morning, brother and sister in the Lord, this morning, we come this morning to this very text this morning, the things which are not seen. Wonder this morning, child of God, do you focus often on the things that are, that are not seen? You see, God has given to you and I a gift this morning, and that gift is the eye of faith. And with the eye of faith, we can behold those things that are not seen. Those things that are not seen this morning, mean you they are eternal. And the things that are not seen this morning are far more real than the things that we do see today because the things that we see today, they fade and flee. But the things that are not seen, they are eternal. Today God wants us to focus. Focus on the things that are that are not seen. Not seen with the natural eye, but seen with the eye of faith. Things not seen. You see, things that are not seen are things this morning that are, that are divinely, divinely prepared. The hand of mortal man has nothing to do with it. The divine hand of our Almighty God prepares them. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, we read these words. I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love Him. You know, that's a powerful thought this morning. Eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love Him. 
Things that are not seen are divinely prepared. In chapter 10 of that same verse we read, But the Spirit hath revealed them unto us. For God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, even the deep things of God. You know, child of God, the things that are not seen, how precious they are to us. The things that are not seen, how powerful they are today. Things that are not seen, they're eternal. You think for a wee moment on our heavenly home today, that's something that's not seen at the present. But it's real just the same. It's real. And I wonder this morning, child of God, when you think of it, in verse number 1 of chapter 5, Paul writes, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, that's the body, were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And child of God, these bodies of ours, at this moment, these bodies as the home are the home of the soul. In these bodies were grown. In these bodies were troubled. In these bodies were sorrow. In these bodies we become sick. In these bodies we face troubles. In these bodies we have tears. In these bodies we sorrow. But this body is only temporal. This body this morning is only temporal. I know this body of mine, it knows sickness, it knows sorrow, it knows pain, it knows problems, it knows troubles, it knows tears. And I know this morning I've been home in this body. This body is my home. I'm restricted. I'm restricted. But as I look at my body this morning, I look at something that God has given to me. This is not my eternal home at the moment. This is my temporal home. But God has for every one of you and every one of me a purpose to be in that body of yours. And that body of yours, we're to glorify the Lord Jesus. We're to tell others of the Lord Jesus. We're to shine for Him. We're to exalt for Him while we are here on planet Earth. But let's not forget also, child of God, these bodies of ours that are dissolving, these bodies of ours that are decaying, these bodies of ours that are growing weak, these bodies of ours that's growing weary. Remember this morning, they're still the temple of the Holy Ghost. And that body this morning in which you dwell indwells God the Holy Spirit. It may be your home, sister, but it's the temple of God, the Holy Spirit. And Paul says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. When death comes to you, when death comes to me, it won't be bad for us, it'll be better for us. It won't be bad for us at all, it'll be best for us, because Paul said in verse 8 of chapter 5, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. That's something Paul longed for. Rather willing to be absent from the body, present with the Lord. 
And then in verse number 2 of chapter 5, chapter 5, we read, For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. That's the body that will come out of the grave at the rapture and totally transformed into the image of His dear Son. Remember what the Lord Jesus said today? He says, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. You see, our heavenly home, that's eternal this morning. It's eternal. All that we have down here, mansions, motors, Money, it's nothing, I tell you. It's nothing. Only temporal. The things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. The heavenly home, the celestial city. Do you remember Hebrews 11 and 10? Abraham, he looked for a city that hath foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Friend, when Abraham made his pilgrimage through this world of ours, he focused on the things that were, that were not seen. His heart this morning was not set in the present. His heart was not set in that which was temporal. His heart this morning was set on that which is not seen and things that were eternal. This is how you and I should go through this life, child of God. Does your heart this morning yearn for the things that are not seen? Does your heart and your soul not cry out this morning to, for the things that are not seen? Paul wrote to the Colossians and said, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things in the earth, because there's too many carnal Christians whose affections are things down here, not on things not seen above. Oh, the celestial city. Thank God I am going to a city this morning. whose builder and maker is God. To think of that celestial city this morning where there will be no slums, that city where there'll be no homeless people, that city where there'll be no sin, and that city where there'll be no death, no graveyards, no funerals, what a celestial city that awaits me. God is the architect and God is the builder. And to think in that celestial city just beyond us here, there'll be no death, there'll be no destruction, there'll be no sin. We look for things not seen, child of God, for the things that are not seen are temporal. Uh, not things, things that are not seen are eternal. Peter said in 1 Peter 1, 3 and 4, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, one that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, O oh, child of God, to focus on things not seen this morning. To think this morning of our incorruptible inheritance, to think of the celestial city, to think of our heavenly home, things not seen, incorruptible. That means it's death-proof. Undefiled, that mean it's sin-proof. One that fadeth away, that's time-proof. Things not seen are eternal. Things not seen are divinely prepared. Things that are not seen are divinely precious. Corrie ten Boom could say, look around and be distressed. 
Look inside and be depressed. Look to Jesus. Ah, that's what she said. She says, look to Jesus and be at rest. That's why we are so restless at times. We don't look to Jesus often enough. Tell me, child of God, tell me, do you think of heaven often? Do you think of him often? Do you think of that land today that is fairer than day? A land not seen as yet, but it's there. I often think of it. I often think of it, and you know what I've discovered? I've discovered the longer you live, the more you think about what lays ahead. The longer you live, the more you think and the more you see how short and how fickle this life and all it has is. The longer I live, you know what it is? I'm only a young fella yet in, in my own mind now. But I often talk about life and how short it is. And I find myself measuring my age as to think of my own father when he was my age. And I thought at my age he was an old done man ready for the grave. And now I find myself thinking about me and thinking about my father at when he was my age, and I can remember him at my age as it was yesterday. I can remember my father well at 52, and the things we used to do together when he was 52. Now I'm at his age, and now at his age I think that all of his generation are now gone. And it only seems like yesterday when he was my age. You know, child of God, when you get to a certain age, you begin to feel how frickle life is. And there's something within the heart that longs for a better day. Longs for hope. There was a farmer one time who was going out the next day to work in the field, and the wee boy said to him, Daddy, can I go out to the field to work with you? You can come, surely, son, if you want to now, but I'll be away all day. Oh, Daddy, I don't care how long you're away. As long as I'm with you, I'm all right. I, I, I really want to go. That's all right, son. Son got up that morning, the next morning, oh, eager, eager to get dressed and eager to get ready to go out to the field with daddy. And in the morning in the field, this was great. Oh, it was just great to be there. Oh, it just couldn't be any better. The wee lad was excited and come to dinner time and the two of them sat down with their basket in the field and ate out of the basket. Daddy, isn't this great? We have to do this more often, Daddy. Well, if you want a son, you can, you can, you can. And then it comes about two o'clock or half to it was. And the wee lad said to his daddy, he says, Daddy, are we going home, sir? It'll be in a wee while, son. It'll be in a wee while. But time enough. That sort of pace of fight him a wee bit. At four o'clock come, the wee lad comes to Daddy again and says, Daddy, is it not time to go home, sir? It will be, it will be, he says. In a wee while, it will be. It got more frequent. 
until daylight started to fade. And the wee boy come to his daddy and he says, he says, Daddy, yes, son. Daddy, I want to go home. I want to go home. You know, child of God, there comes a stage in life all you want to do is, is go home. Because the longer you live down here, you soon realize that you soon realize that nothing lasts. But, and the things that are unseen, they are eternal. Wonder, do you think of heaven often? Do you think of your home often in heaven? Tell me this, do you think of your loved ones often? I know you could stand at the grave, and as you look at the grave, that's temporal. That's only temporal. Today they're in the glory. The old hymn says, there are loved ones in the glory whose dear form we often met. That's true. Today for them, the things that are not seen to us are seen to them. They're there this morning. They have just gone beyond. And Fanny Crosby, that great hymn writer, was interviewed. The interviewer said, I think it's a pity that the Master didn't allow you to keep your seat. Fanny Crosby said, when I reach heaven, the first face that will gladden my sight will be the face of my blessed Savior. The worldly, the worldly person only lives for the flesh. The worldly person only lives for time. The worldly person only lives for things that are temporal. Ah, but child of God, we should not focus on that which is seen. For that which is seen is temporal. Oh, that we should focus on things not seen. For the things that are not seen, they're eternal. And you and I are the heirs of glory this morning. You and I are the heirs of glory. And every moment brings us closer, brings us closer to that moment when it'll be forever with the Lord. Ah, friend, things that are not seen. They're divinely prepared. They're divinely precious. Divinely permanent, for they are eternal. Do you know something this morning? I was thinking this this morning. The very thought of this glorious future that is ours, brother, the very thought of this glorious future that is our sister, you know what it does for my heart? It relieves my heart of the darkness of the past, and it relieves my heart of the dreary gloom of the present. And I'll tell you something else it does. It makes me see that the joy of heaven will more than compensate for the sorrows of time. Child of God, this is why Paul writes, and this is how we should live. Looking not to the things that are seen, for the things that are seen are temporal. We look to the things that are not seen, for the things that are not seen. They're eternal. Just the other day I was thinking to myself, 
wonder how much life I've got left to live. Men, it yes, could be very short. I could be the next out of the whole lot of us to go. I could be. I could be the next one to go. The life that the Lord could have for me could be very, very short. And the life for you, child of God, could be very, very short too. Or it may be long, we don't know. But whether it's short or whether it's long, from now till then, let us focus on things that are not seen. For the things that are not seen, they are eternal. And they tell us today. And they show us the best is yet. May God bless this word to our hearts and help us to long for that day when the Lord would come and we will see the King in all his beauty. Our closing hymn is 